Good afternoon. I'm Councilmember Mark Jaronai, Chair of the Committee on Small Business, and I'd like to welcome you to our vote on a bill designed to improve protections for small business owners and commercial tenants. Small businesses are the lifeblood of this city. Businesses with less than 10 employees are responsible for 80% of the city workforce. Our city's local economy is dependent on the success of these small businesses. Despite these micro-businesses being under a major aspect of the or of a unique and vibrant culture that they form in our neighbors and communities, some small businesses are finding it more and more difficult to stay in business. From the rise of e-commerce to big box store competition, consumer behavior changes, or government regulation and mandates, our small businesses are facing more hurdles. Dealing with unfair landlords can be an obstacle that micro-businesses face. However, I'd like to make it clear that not all landlords are abusive or harassing their tenants, but there are a few bad actors that ruin the industry and must be made an example of. Intro 1410B would redefine commercial tenant harassment as an act or omissions that serve to intentionally harass commercial tenants, such as threats, intentionally cutting off essential services that are vital to the operations, such as water, heat, electric, or removing personal property belonging to the tenant and preventing access to the lease premises. This legislation will raise civil penalties for landlords that commit such harassment. The piece of legislation we are voting on today will further the City Council's goal to defend and protect our micro-businesses from being harassed. Finally, I'd like to recognize the committee members that are, have joined us. We have Council Member Levine, Council Member Rosenthal, Council Member Gibson, and it's my honor to now introduce Council Member Gibson, who introduced 1410, to say a few words. Thank you so much, Chair Jonai, and good afternoon to all of my colleagues, to Council Member Levin and Council Member Rosenthal. I thank you, members of the Small Business Committee. Uh, I'm Vanessa Gibson. I serve as a member of this council on behalf of District 16 in the Bronx, um, and I'm very proud that today the Small Business Committee will be voting out intro 1410B, uh, which would really redefine commercial tenant harassment um, as an act or omission by a landlord that would reasonably cause a commercial tenant to vacate or surrender or waive their rights under a rental agreement. Um, as our chair described, this bill would essentially broaden the acts and omissions that constitute what commercial tenant harassment is. It would raise the civil penalties for landlords that are actually found to commit commercial tenant harassment, uh, in which their tenant is the subject of that harassment as well as when a landlord has been found to have engaged in commercial tenant harassment, the bill would clarify that courts can order the Department of Buildings to not approve or issue um, certain documents for certain types of construction. And the covered categories of work are essentially defined as demolition of all or part of the property, change of use or occupancy, or any change to the layout configuration or the location of any portion of the property. Uh, we recognize that there should be exceptions and those are work that's conducted for the purpose to make any part of the property accessible to people with disabilities as well as work conducted to remedy a hazardous condition or impending hazardous condition as well as work that the tenant agreed uh, with the landlord uh, in an agreement between the landlord as well as the tenant. I think many of us recognize here in the council and many New Yorkers that given the the reality of a lot of development and construction that continues to take place across this city, as well as a number of neighborhood rezonings that we've passed here in the council, as well as those that are to come, we have to do more to protect small businesses. The mom and pop shops that have provided critical services across our city, the legacy businesses that have been in business for so many years, we have to provide additional safeguards and protections for them. And I think for me on a personal level, I learned a lot about the commercial tenant industry when I worked with Councilmember Cabrera and we worked on the Jerome rezoning. And it took three years to achieve and when we passed it by the council here in 2017, we put a lot of protections in for 
for residential tenants. The universal access to counsel law that we have today that provides free legal assistance for tenants facing eviction, as well as we started a pilot uh, known as the Certificate of No Harassment that was led by Council Member Lander. And the pilot neighborhoods focused on the areas where you had the greatest concentration of displacement, the highest numbers of rent regulated housing, as well as neighborhood rezonings. So in my district, both Bronx Community Boards 4 and 5 have been and are a part of the existing pilot on the Certificate of No Harassment for residential tenants. But we also realized that we didn't have a lot of protections for commercial tenants. And if anyone travels in the Bronx and you travel along Jerome Avenue today, you will see a lot of small businesses, predominantly immigrant-led, uh, predominantly car ownership and automobile industry uh, businesses, and a lot of them are subject to harassment. They came to our office. They talked about many situations where they had no lease. They were paying rent off the books. They were paying in cash. They were getting no receipts. Uh, we had one car wash whose landlord raised the rent and the tenant could not afford the rent. And what did the landlord do? He started to cut the water off and the electricity. And while Chair Joni acknowledges and I agree that not every landlord is bad, certainly the few bad apples and the few bad neighbors that do not play by the rules, we do have to send a larger message. And certainly we understand unintended consequences and we know that although we try and make our best effort, not every legislation, not every bill is perfect, but I do think it takes us in a step of progress, which is what we should be doing as a council and as an administration. So this bill we've worked on quite extensively, and I am thankful for our chair, for the speaker, and for all of my colleagues. And as I close, I really do want to recognize the grassroots organizations on the ground. These are the groups that do this work every day, that focus on commercial tenants, that focus on harassment, that focus on legal services, and really put a lot of effort and labor of love into making this bill uh, what it is today. And that is uh, ANHD, the Association for Neighborhood and Housing Development, Brooklyn Legal Services, Shahaya CDC, the Commercial Development Project of Urban Justice Center, Cooper Square Committee, Fourth Arts Block, the Municipal Arts Society, Northwest Bronx Community and Clergy Coalition, the NYC Artist Coalition, the Street Vendor Project, uh, Women's uh, Housing and Economic Development Corporation, also known as WEDCO in the Bronx. And finally, we want to recognize volunteers of legal services and thank them for all of their work in supporting this bill and providing more protections and safeguards for our commercial tenants across New York City. Thank you, colleagues. I look forward to your support and your uh, vote today, as well as later on in Stated this week. Thank you, Chair Joe and I. I appreciate your indulgence. Thank you. We'll have a roll call. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on small business, introduction 1410B, Chair Jonai. I vote aye. Levin. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. I vote of three in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstention. Item has been adopted by the committee.